Hello friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and I woke up with just all the fire to get all the preserving done today. And I had promised you guys a condensed tomato soup canning recipe and I got going on it without you guys and completely forgot. So let me catch you up to where I am. That's what I'm making today. In the roaster is just chili base, which I already have a video on. I got curry arriving today to make my green tomato curry, which I already have a video on. So there's a bucket of green tomatoes over there. Harvested some sweet potatoes last night. I am gonna use some sweet potatoes in today's video. You don't have to, I'll give you options around that. But come down here, let's catch up with where I left off so I can keep this pace going because I feel the energy. And you know, when you have it, don't let it go, push through it and uh, you know, keep that momentum going. So um, let's head over to the oven because these uh, trays of tomatoes and other goodies are about to head in there. All right, so what I did this morning just to get started is, can you guys see the trays? Yeah, sorry, I can't see my screen without bending over. Um, I've got two trays of what was frozen tomatoes, all varieties of tomatoes. If you're not new to my channel, I, I'm that way with everything I make. I don't just stick with like a paste tomato for sauce or um, certain varieties of tomatoes for anything. I just use what I grow. So we have, you know, Dr. Witchies and uh, Cherokee Purples and Better Boys and Cherry Tomatoes, just all the things. So I would say that this is probably 20 to 25 pounds of tomatoes. I have um, about four good sized celery stalks. I harvested some of my next crop of celery out of the garden. So four stalks of celery, leaves and all, cause I will use it all. And um, three onions per tray. So six onions totaled. I just took the skins off and then um, chopped them in eighths and laid them out on the tray. So these are gonna be roasted now. Um, because mine are frozen, I'm just gonna eyeball it when I think that they're nice and flavorful and I got some good flavors coming out. I actually might throw some garlic cloves on here still yet. Yep, let's plan on doing that whether I show it to you or not. I'll probably add like five garlic cloves to each tray. And I'm gonna roast them though. If they were fresh, you'd probably do like 25 minutes, 40 minutes, um, 25 minutes probably. I'm probably gonna go the full 40 because it'll take a while for these to thaw out. So let me get them in the roaster and I'm gonna have to do some tray Jenga halfway through and flip them around. And I know somebody will ask because you might watch my videos because they're frozen. Not all of my tomatoes when I put in the freezer do I pre-core them. It just depends on how much time do I have when things are coming in the house. And so not all of those are cored. So when they come out of the oven, I will take the skins off and probably have to wait for them to cool and core them. So you have options there. Now, I didn't mention my sweet potatoes. So I feel like I'm scattered all over the place because I'm doing so many things. I have a bunch of, let me just pull one out for example, a bunch of skinny little potatoes and these, um, not gonna use them for much other than things like today when I'm using them in chili or soups and things like that. So I'm gonna wash some of these up and lay them on the tray too, probably Let's go with the idea of 10 to 12 per tray and get those roasting at the same time. And what I did last year when I made it was I used roasted carrots. So if you don't have sweet potatoes, I don't have a lot of extra carrots laying around. Um, I'm going to use my sweet potatoes. It just adds a sweetness and a depth of flavor to that tomato soup. 
So whether it's carrots or sweet potatoes, definitely get yourself something yummy orange in there. Um, so let me wash these up and then I'll show you throwing them back on the tray. All right, got my garlics. I'll put a handful on tray one. Oh, whatever. All right, let me grab my sweet potatoes. So I just washed them, uh, trimmed any bad parts off, took the like stringy roots off. We'll roast these together. Now you could throw other, you know, make this your own. So you could throw in like some sprigs of thyme, um, whatever seasonings you think you want. I know I'm adding basil to mine when um, it comes out of the oven though. I'm not gonna roast my basil, so. All right, we'll check back in on it after about probably 45 minutes or so. Well, I tell you what, that was tricky. Um, I needed the camera off because the water content of these tomatoes was overrunning the cookie trays and spilling down into the bottom of the oven. So I kept having to get my roaster pan out and ladle juice off of the pans but they're all roasted. I have to let these cool down before I move on to the next step. And you totally don't have to roast your vegetables to make a tomato soup, understand. But the flavor that you get from roasting your vegetables, it, it just can't be um, beat. So I'm gonna let these cool. We'll peel the sweet potatoes. We'll peel the garlic core any of the tomatoes that aren't cored yet, slip the skins and get on to the next step. So just in case you don't want to wait for me and you're making this as you're watching this, that's what I'll be doing next. So it'll probably be an hour or so. We have family coming over. We're going to have lunch together. And so I'm not sure when I'll see you back, but I'll be here as soon as I can. Okay, so they're finally cooled off enough. So I want to show you guys my tip of how you can get your tomato cores and skins off real quick. So you don't have to stress about not having time to core them in the middle of the harvest season. So come down here real quick. Okay, so I have a core you see right here, right? And I'm just gonna grab the core and kind of work that skin around. And then I just take and squeeze the pulp, the tomato pulp off. And it just pulls right off of all that quarry bits. And then you're left with the skin. I probably dropped a little skin in there. There you go. Ta-da. You're just left with the core, a little bit of meat. Anyway, it's nice and easy, so I don't I don't stress about it. And then the little cherry tomatoes, they're so easy, they just fall right out. And anything that I did, like this is a nice Amish paste. They kind of just fall off. Whoops. Ta-da, and you just have the core. So anyway, it makes it stress-free stress -free for me, so. If I, you know, I'm just busy in the year, um, I've got tips to work around that. But we're just about done. I've got this whole sheet pan done. Um, and then we'll throw it in a pot and add our seasonings and let it cook together for a while. Okay, it's been a minute, right? I told you we had company coming over, so I had my in-laws here. We had a wonderful pot of homemade chili with my chili base that I made um, from last year's tomatoes. That's what the pot here is for this year's tomatoes, more chili base. But we're making tomato, um, tomato soup, right? While my mother-in-law was here, we got all the sweet potatoes peeled. Um, and the piggies got all those yummy scraps. Now, I can't easily oh stop my tomatoes oh no 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 god 
kind of stinks having white cabinets when you're a homesteader. I tell you what, not the wisest decision, but um, I don't know how many times I have spilled tomatoes, something tomato down these cabinets, but the dog's down there helping clean it up. I am carefully trying to get all of this in a blender. I didn't do this last year, I just used my immersion blender, but I think this year with the sweet potato bits and everything, I'm gonna carefully try to get this loaded up and we're gonna puree it. Then we're gonna get it in a pot, we're gonna season it, and then it's gonna be ready to cook. So had it not been for visiting hours, this whole thing probably can come together in two hours maybe? 40 minutes to roast the tomatoes, you know, if you were more thoughtful than me and you had all of your tomato skins already off and cored, it wouldn't take that long. So we're gonna do this in batches. Let me get it blended up. We'll get it in the big old pot behind us and then we'll season it. This is the last of it. That's a big old pot of condensed tomato soup. Oh my gosh, it's thick. So guys, I know you're thinking, Rachel, how much tomato soup can you eat? Well, yes, tomato soup is great. Tomato soup and grilled cheese, but you don't have to just eat it as tomato soup, right? How many things recipes call for tomato soup as an ingredient. Um, one of my favorite ways that I've ever had roast cooked, now I've never done it myself, but um, throw in a can of tomato soup, some balsamic vinegar on your pot roast on a slow cooker with some onions. Oh my goodness, is that good. Um, make a tomato soup with like tortellini in it. Um, just all kinds of yumminess. I wish you guys could feel the texture. It's like, oh, heaven. <laughs> all right, so let me grab my recipe book. Actually, it's right here. And let's find out what other ingredients we have to add. Um, okay, so we need to do oregano. Um, I might, I don't know if I will. I don't know if I will. I don't think I will. Now you could add, when this comes out, instead of just adding milk, you could add chicken stock, which is what the recipe is that I wrote down. Like I said, I made it last year for the first time. I cannot remember what recipe I followed to save my life, but we loved having it on the pantry shelves. So I'm doing something new today. I can't guarantee that this is gonna be my, my go-to tomato soup recipe, but I know I already love it. Um, we're just gonna add oregano and salt and pepper. Yeah, that's it. All right, I may add, cause you guys know I love it, liquid aminos, just for some umami. Well, let's get to going on some seasoning and we'll see what we think. Oh, I did say I wanted to add basil, didn't I? I do have a lot of basil. Okay, Todd just came in and tasted it. He said he thinks it needs sugar. I will tell you, I think it's plenty sweet as it is. So I just, this is my oregano that I harvested. And a tip that I like to do is, I don't like to process my herbs off the stem. I just like to hang them and dry them. And when I need them, I roll the stems in between my hands and get off all the leaves that I need. So that's probably good. I'm kind of just winging it and then we'll taste as we go. And that's what I recommend you do too when you're starting out with recipes, is just kind of taste it and wing it as you go. We'll start with an eighth of a cup or so of salt. I have some basil here, so. And some liquid aminos. Pepper. Probably similarly a good eighth of a cup or so of pepper. And I will go ahead and grab some brown sugar. Now again, 
I really mean it. I don't think it needs it, personally. But I love that Todd loves what I put up in the pantry and cook, you know, make from the garden. So if he'll like it better with a little bit more sugar, then I'll do that for him. And this is just homemade brown sugar, so it's just raw, um, unrefined sugar with some molasses added back to it. So maybe like I'll start with right at a half a cup. And then I think we're just gonna cook this for about 30 minutes. I've got it on medium heat. I'll come back and taste it after about 30 minutes and see how it is and if it tastes good and hopefully get Todd back in the house and taste it. If he thinks it's good, then we'll can it. It's so good. Oh, okay. I need to stop and write down everything I just did in my recipe so I don't forget. Okie dokie. I think we are ready to jar it up. Since I added sweet potatoes, extra celery, extra onions, then anything that you're gonna find that's safe for water bath canning, I'm gonna go ahead and pressure can this. I am using my super fun Lay Parfait jars, not sponsored. I just had them extra um, from, when was it that we had that big canning shortage? Is it 2020? Need to find my funnel. And this, you guys see my sink? This is what it looks like when you've been canning all day <laughs> and cooking. Okay, let's get going. I'm not sure how much this is gonna make. These are 24 ounce jars. So I just got a lot ready. And I'm going to one inch ahead space, which on these jars is basically a little below the lip. Mm -hmm. I usually have a, sometimes they have a fill line. Yeah, they have a max line on them. So let's see if I can show that on the camera. So they have, if I hold my hand in there, can you guys see that max? It says max right there. That's where I'm going to. No spillage. And then you snap them down, rubber gaskets on, and I'm going to, I don't even have my pressure canner going, which is fine. No, I'm not crazy particular about that. I'll just bring it up to where it's the same temperature as my jars are currently, and then we will get them going. I'm going to pressure can these for 25 minutes. Todd said he likes it as is, condensed or not. He came in and gave it a final test and uh, or taste, and he said I wouldn't add anything to it. Milk, nothing. It's great the way it is. Isn't that beautiful though? Absolutely stunning. Delicious. Better than Campbell's tomato soup. Just got the water where it's pretty darn close to the temperature of the soup. I'm not sure how many of these jars I can fit in here. So, hopefully five on each row. It's not looking promising. Let's see. Oh, yay! Because I got 10, 10 jars. Super. Oh, nope, I have 11 jars. Well, I will just put this one in the fridge and Todd and I will have that this week for dinner. I'm not gonna run a whole nother canner, unless I save that when I do the 
chili base and I can always just run one round of chili through the pressure canner. All right, let me get my, grab my lid. So I'm purposely doing this wrap up with my dirty sink behind me because I don't want you guys to feel like when you see things in video and everything looks like, how did they keep their kitchen so clean? It is impossible on days like today when you are just running rounds and rounds and rounds. Dishwasher's clean. I can now empty the dishwasher, get that madness cleaned up. Chili base is almost ready for seasoning. This is gonna go for 25 minutes. If you guys do want a water bath canning recipe though, there is a tomato soup recipe in the ball canning book or just Google ball canning tomato soup and you'll find it. Um, I will also link to Linda's pantry video which where, was where my inspiration last year came from to even try it. Um, and yes, I'm really excited about this year's with the sweet potatoes. But if you don't have sweet potatoes, totally use carrots or leave it all out together. Um, but that adds just a wow factor. So thanks guys. I'm so happy I finally brought you the tomato soup video. Now just one more way of preserving is in my tomato playlist. And I can reference it <laughs> again in the future if I need to, if I don't understand my crazy edits to my this is like it says modified you know and I'm kind of just plus this plus that plus this so I need to take my time and write it better when I have better time talk to you guys later happy preserving where you are and I hope you're filling your pantry with some wonderful goodness talk to you guys on the next video